we're very happy to be here. We arrived last night and it's, it's a long ride, but uh, uh, we're delighted to see all of you here and in, in this great place. Um, so uh, tonight we, we're going to show you a little bit of our built work, more than one project in depth. We're going to uh, go through several projects uh, to hopefully show you a little bit of insight of, of how we how we think and how we, we do our projects. The, the subject of intimate, uh, in, intimate or, or in, intimate, I think it's very appropriate for our own practice because we are a couple, so it's by definition what we do. It's everything we do, it's very intimate, so our office is very intimate, and, and we think the production, the, the, the outcome of that intimate process is also very intimate, so uh, thank you very much for, for the invitation. We're delighted to be here. And the subject that we want to share is uh, this, uh, these two words that are uh, somehow a contradiction. It refers to, to what we practice both in art and architecture. So we think that there is a common, common ground for the two practices. We think that it's a single practice. And it is this uh, contradiction between what we think is uh, an intention and what we think it's, a, it's something more arbitrary or uh, even irrational. We think that the production is in the middle point between uh, circumstances and something that is more substantial or, or fundamental. We don't have any, any answer to that. I don't know if you're familiar with the Chilean geography. It, this is the Chilean map projected in the back of, of an artist. Chile is defined by the, the Andes Mountains and the Pacific Ocean. Uh, it's very disproportionate. It's very narrow and, and long. Uh, we live in the central area of the country. And for us, this image is uh, the it's very clear because it shows something that for us is very natural. It's a way of understanding our own uh, context uh, in a way that we, we consider that it's very abstract. It's our country as a structure is very basically a line uh, that is uh, embodied in, in our understanding of, of the world. Uh, so we, we normally refer to, to this schematic and very idealized way of understanding. And in, in general terms, we could perhaps state that uh, for us, architecture uh, can be defined as a form of knowledge in very general terms. And in more specific terms, that understanding or the, the practice of architecture, uh, it's basically the, the, the knowledge of form and how that form can be articulated with a specific uh, circumstance. So, since we know that our context has defined our, our way of facing the, the, the world, uh, we think that this image uh, can be a, a, a synthesis of, of, or a kind of met metaphor of, of our practice, not because of the technology, but because of our uh, way of producing or our productive context. It is a brick oven and an unskilled worker. And we think that the brick oven is this uh, uh, machine that produces raw material with raw material. It's a brick, it's basically a raw material for something else. And the unskilled worker is it's basically a unit of force that can be applied to anything. So for us, it's important to understand that we are in a context where, at least in this idealized understanding of, of the context, uh, we can produce something uh, that is nothing new in, in conceptual terms. For, for those of you who have been to Buenos Aires and, and have visited the main landmark there, which is the obelisk, uh, if you turn around, this is what you see. And, and we, we like this image a lot because it essentially condenses um, are our influences, as opposed to Peru, where there's a strong pre-Columbian influence in our part of the world, which is the, the southern tip of South America, everything we know, or our cultural context, is very much uh, brought in the last uh, 500 years. 
So everything we have built around us is a coexistence of, of those influences. We're always dealing with these imported models that arrived all simultaneously. So as opposed to all of you Europeans who have grown over time with uh, your buildings, we somehow have them all at the same time. So for us, it's much harder to distinguish the models and what they represent. They're all there, they're simultaneous, they coexist. And uh, you know, if you've read Borges, there's a character that is called Funes de Memorias, uh, who's this character who can remember every single detail of, of everything. But because he has that capacity, he has no capacity for abstraction or for defining hierarchies. And we think that probably the, the, this context that surrounds us somehow gives us the freedom to reinterpret those models, the translation of those models. Uh, this is a, an exercise with, we've done with students and, well, you know these images of high culture of architecture. We can only deal with the images because that's what we, we get in our context. So we were asking our students what you see on PESO side is actually a, a model, a model 1 to 10 made by our students in this exercise of translation, of understanding information that arrives to us through a photography and looking at it so carefully that you can also reproduce it and somehow extract information from it. But this is an exercise that we have done, again, this is with other, from, from more precarious context. Again, the photograph on this side and the models one to 10 on the other that students are producing, where we think the precarious context can also be a learning tool to look very closely. And this uh, is an, uh, an, an, an exhibition we did. It's, a, it's a, in itself a reconstruction of uh, two towers that contain uh, documentation of living rooms. It's a very, at, at first sight, a very simple and regular structure of a very modernist uh, interior. And so we did a reproduction of 200 living rooms, of uh, existing living rooms of our region, uh, at the scale 1 to 20. Uh, and what at first sight appears as an opposition between the rigidity of architecture and the life of, of domesticity, uh, we discover that it's basically the same. The, the uh, e everyday life is also very uh, much uh, co uh, uh, pre-codified by, by, by traditions. This is another exercise on, on identity or, or Yes, based on popular culture. Uh, in this case, what we are interested in is that as architects, we're accustomed to working with scale, to working with models. Uh, but when popular culture makes a tiny reproduction of, of existing buildings, they're no longer called models, they're called souvenirs. And they're not about, about scale, they're about mimesis. And we thought it's very interesting when we see these objects that they represent the assimilation of architecture into a culture. The moment somebody makes a souvenir, it means they've assimilated that as val a valuable building. Uh, so what we did is we traveled from north to south of Chile, buying souvenirs in every market. That's the 90 objects you, you saw, the every, one, every single one we could find. And then I asked an artisan to make 10 souvenirs of existing contemporary buildings we thought were important. Uh, in an exercise of fiction, of acceleration of that assimilation into culture. Uh, this curatorial research we presented in the Venice Biennale uh, of 2008, uh, and we presented all the objects, 100, the 90 recollected and the 10 fake or, or fictional ones, uh, at eye level, and we're questioning at to what point can meaning be independent of scale or not. Or uh, two years later, when uh, for the Biennale Sejima was organizing, we continued with this idea of object, but uh, exploring more how does the context and the object uh, somehow interact, and what is the re reciprocity or impact between one and the other? How much can one impact or have some kind of effect beyond itself? This is another exhibition we did in Mexico, and again, we're trying to explore the, this reciprocity between the, the presence of an object and the representation of that object that is beyond its own presence. So it's a, it's a small intervention in a small gallery. Uh, we assume it as a retrospective of our work in a huge museum with uh, 12 rooms and a central open space. So you could visit the museum uh, in, with 
12 rooms that are equal, exactly the same, with a model in the center, with the uh, pictures and drawings in, in the walls, uh, up to a point where you would understand that there is a collapse of reality because the model was 1 to 10 with an exhibition 1 to, 10, 1 to 20 contained in that model. So there is a moment where, where reality in itself uh, collapses. And another way to understand scale, but in, in this case it's more uh, through the addition of small elements is, and also as a temporal scale, not only physical, but uh, temporal. This was a project in Alaska made of uh, ev modules that people could put together. It's a, a small pavilion, it's called a so soft pavilion. Uh, and also scale related to a landscape, like how can you manipulate that? In this case, it's a, it's a pavilion with no structure. The only thing that holds together everything is the wind that creates a, a structure where people can meet and coexist. And, and it defines different degrees of uh, intimacy or uh, common space for, for people. This is another model that was imported to our landscape. It's a, it's a bull ring. It's a, a place where uh, you can play somehow. Uh, and, and for us, it's, it's important as, as uh, the representation of what uh, we call a perfect machine uh, because it could allow us to replace the notion of form by the notion of format. Uh, this figure is so abstract and so idealized that uh, uh, it's basically a reduction uh, of reality to two basic factors of, that are fundamental for architecture. It has a dimension and it has a certain uh, uh, direction. Uh, so we, we, we are normally trying to deal with those factors in the, in the definition of a project. This is a, f a fragment of a, a, a larger series of paintings we, we have been doing. And it's based on those uh, notions of uh, a, a single line that defines an interior that then is uh, repeated up to a point where it dilutes itself. It's a, a series of lines. These are portraits. Uh, there is only one line that uh, depicts the, the subject. In this case, this is Sophia's profile. I don't know if you can see it. There is only one line that is Sophia. Uh, there is the no nose, the chin, the forehead. Can you see it? No? More or less. And all the, the other lines are uh, 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 mechanically constructed based on the same amount of points and, and curves and arches. Uh, so they are the same but totally different. So the, ex the excess of lines uh, end up hiding the real, the real line. And we think that this is something that we have explored in, in a uh, sequence of uh, suburban houses where the core of the house is hidden by this, the, the perimeter wall, by the, by the envelope. So in a certain way, the, the outer perimeter works as a literal and almost a conceptual mask that hides the, the intimacy of, of the house. In this case, this, this is a house that revolves around a central void. It's a small void around a, a spiraling staircase, not around, sorry, in, in, in the center of a spiraling staircase. It's a monolithic piece of concrete that uh, takes the whole height of the house. And, and then it's all somehow wrapped around a very, a very neutral and compact uh, structure that, that doesn't reveal any of this. The formal structure is uh, a sequence of platforms that are going uh, spiraling up in, 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 in platforms that are separated like 70 centimeters from each other. Uh, there are 12 plat platforms. Uh, and then in, in a floor plan, it's a, it's a compact uh, floor plan with a cross in, in, inside uh, that separates four different uh, rooms two of them with a more neutral proportion. And then, I don't know if you saw in the plan, but the central staircase is a shortcut. It's a very direct path that connects all the floors. But then you also have the other path, which goes from room to room. And that can be a secondary, slower pace that creates a completely different relationship. But because all these rooms intersect the core where the staircase is, what really happens in this house is that the staircase acts as a 
almost like a, an expanser of space. You can look through the staircase and connect simultaneously to six or seven rooms within the house. So although it's not a large house, it, it, it feels extremely spacious. From the outside, it's, it's, a, it's a very simple and compact uh, wooden case that is separated from, from the limits and, and that uh, in opposition to the, the neighbors that are over... Uh, uh, Expressive. And, and occupying the, the, the site very... How do you say when it's overcrowding? Overcrowded. Yeah, the yeah. site. Uh, this is very... Uh, isolated and, and somehow hiding the, 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 the interior functions. In this other case, this is again another vertical format, but in opposition to the previous one, uh, it is in the limit of not being really three-dimensional. It's more a uh, plane with uh, two different directions. Uh, one direction uh, that is facing a pedestrian path, path uh, uh, pathway, uh, that resembles a more a tower, a very thin tower, and the other side is uh, it's wide and and, and 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 with this square proportion that it's similar to a, a billboard that uh, faces the the highway. So in the construction, the 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 envelope of of this format, uh, there is this also this duality of transparency from one side and opacity. Uh, from the other. And, and it's a structure that the, the classic notion of entasis, of, of reduction in the height, is not because of a reduction in the element, but in the amount of elements. So it's five stories stacked up, uh, and just by um, reducing the vertical elements that make up the frame, it, it, it grows smaller. This is a model of just a fragment. It's all covered then by a homogeneous structure, a sort of sedimentation then in the base that, that gives it weight to support. And then it's this vertical bridge that people can cross through. It connects the city center with the campus, uh, and it's in the middle of a very, very busy highway. Uh, so it's a moment of calm, of perfume, of ventilated air, uh, where you get some peace. Uh, and, and what is also interesting is it, it directs the views upwards to the to the a blue sky of, of Denver. This is what, uh, again, another perfect machine, not because of uh, its urban attributes, but because of uh, uh, its uh, quality of being a tool to conquer uh, an unknown territory. Uh, for us, this is almost the definition of what an architectural project is, this uh, uh, series of rules that allow you to, to face something that you don't know and, and, and that you somehow are scared of. Uh, within that very rigid and schematic uh, framework, we think that a project should be developed based on the addition of small, little, little uh, uh, decisions, uh, and each one of them very particular to, to circumstances. Uh, but then the, 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 the resulting work is not, at least how we want to see it, a conclusion of that process, but a, a mere moment of interruption, at an exhaustion of time. Um, another, well, in this addition of things, this is a project, uh, an urban choreography we did, where somehow there's an addition of just 100 people dressed in yellow, and, and this choreography that moved through the, through the city was defining new limits and defining new ways of occupying uh, the city. That's a, another way of understanding a project, or also through addition, where the individual units are not important, but the, the, the totality, this is a project in, in New York that is 2,800 elements in a grid, a three-meter grid, that uh, act to give a rhythm or a sense of, of size to a place, uh, just because of this rigidity of the pattern actually highlights all the singularities and the, and the differences within, within that territory. In a more architectonic uh, format, this is one of our first uh, houses, uh, and it's a horizontal format, 20 by 30 meters. Uh, 
the unit here is the, a basic room defined by, by walls. Uh, and the depth of the plan is uh, controlled by, by the porosity uh, of some of the, some of the rooms. So it's, it's both a, a big and a small house. It's, it's uh, big because it's many rooms, but none of the rooms are actually uh, large. Um, it's, there are some rooms that are interior, some rooms that are exterior, and that's the only difference. In, in this alternating uh, sequence, the house feels big because of the because of the extensions throughout the house, throughout the courtyards, where there's always uh, an alternating sequence of uh, yes, a living room and then a patio and then a dining room and then a patio, and and so on in in both directions. So although from the outside it feels like one house, it ties everything together. Uh, then in the inside you always get these crossed, extended, horizontal relations through rooms and through outside spaces. And uh, beyond the, 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 this labyrinthic uh, in, uh, level of, of rooms, there are some moments of decompression in, in the section uh, by an articulation of the ceilings with the, the external roofs that uh, have the only rule of descending towards the, uh, the perimeter and the courtyards so as to avoid casting shadows to, to, to the patios. All of this is then covered, all these 14 truncated uh, pyramids are all covered in, in these uh, tiles that unify uh, the geometry. But uh, those two different geometries that are the, the roof outside and the ceiling inside actually had one instruction. This was the only plan we presented in the construction site. Every, every roof had the same lower horizon and upper horizon and then the geometry of the ceiling and the roof are different. But the carpenters got instruction to build uh, the, what do you call them, the trusses. Mm -hmm. They knew how to build them, so they only got the geometry, and, and this, is, this was the instruction. Uh, then this was drawn after the construction. It was uh, a German intern who, who did all the drawings. He went to site and actually drew everything. Um, but, but that's a little bit how our context works. You have a criteria, and then the criteria is applied uh, on site. And the house is basically uh, inserted in, in, into this very intimate landscape of uh, existing trees. And uh, when the house was finished, we received this present from one of the kids. There live uh, like five kids in the, in the house. And we were fascinated by the precision of it, uh, how, in the way in which, in his mind, uh, he could see these little bits of nature capture within the format of a house. And for us, that was a confirmation of something that is very nowadays very well known, this, our, our very uh, native capacity to understand space, not because of the geometry, but because of a relationship, which is not the descriptive or, or Euclidean geometry, but the topological geometry, which is basically three different figures, but the relationship in them, it's exactly the same. And this is something that in the best of the cases, we think that can be articulated with a certain meaning, a certain movement or a certain spatial relationship with, despite the material circumstances, that spatial relationship can be articulated with a, with a meaning. This is something that we have explored now. This is a, an exploration that is ongoing now with, in, in, through paintings, uh, which is basically to, to, to try to find the specificity of a relationship, the singularity of, of, of a certain structure, uh, with a, the articulation of discrete uh, spatial entities with uh, uh, rooms that are neutral in themselves. So, so if, as architects, we're always dealing with, with a limitation, with demarcation, uh, in this case, this is a small pavilion where that notion becomes critical, where you have the notion of, of, of a limit, and, and of those limits, and the door in architecture is the most uh, relative of all the limits because it has in itself the possibility of being an opening and being also a, a solid limit. Uh, so this is, is called 120 doors. It's five perimeters that deal with a center core, but up to what point is something an interior or an exterior, or is it public or is it private? Uh, so, so that very, um, yes, that very 
idea is, is what it questions. It's just a very simple steel structure with 120 doors. It was uh, uh, built in a park, a very enigmatic and, and uh, yes, intimidating presence. But then everything, the doors and the, and the structure was all painted black, uh, so it, it was uh, kids are the ones who go in the most, which was interesting because it's, in a way, it, it invited people to question also up to what point they wanted to not only physically but conceptually enter and, and question, is this art, is it architecture? At, if I go in, I have to, the only purpose is to then find my way out again. Um, which is something that you would uh, ask to a work of art, how to enter physically and conceptually. This is a more recent uh, pavilion, uh, again with a centralized structure. It's a construction we did for the Royal Academy of Arts. This Art is not the pavilion. In London. No, 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 this is the, the room we, we receive as a, as a context. And especially because we come from the extreme south of the world, we were fascinated by the, by the weight, the historical weight of the room to acknowledge that the roof and the ceiling and all the decoration has been there as a wit wit witness of all the movements the, the, of, of the, yeah, the, 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 an art institution, a traditional art institution. So our proposal, we received the biggest room of, of the museum and we decided to, to make an intervention only in half of the room, uh, leaving the other side the other part completely empty, and to align the structure with the axiality of the classical building. Our proposal is uh, a very simple building type. It's a mixture of uh, a hut, a table, a baldacchino, uh, composed by four pillars and, and a platform on top. Each one of the columns is hollow and, and contained a, a staircase. So the upper platform, uh, uh, in fact, is a, it's a room, it's a uh, suspended room, and then there is a ramp in, in, in next to it, which is a long journey to, to arrive to that room. Uh, because it's, it's rotated in relation to the existing room, it, it distorts the perspective, but also the sense of scale. And if you see, uh, it's, the platform is completely aligned with the cornice, uh, everything that has been done in that room happens from that cornice downwards, and we were interested in taking people to the upper stratum of the room. So uh, also the access to those staircases is completely hidden if, when you enter the room. So when you appear, you only can hear the, the noise of people circulating up, and this is what happens in this elevated platform. It's somehow, because of the wall around it, it's not too high and it's not low, but it blends with existing ceiling, uh, it has all the natural light of, of the room and it's decorated by, by that, uh, the identity of the existing room. It was all prefabricated in Chile with Chilean wood by our Chilean carpenters who then traveled to London to assemble this. Uh, and it was a fantastic experience for them. So all of these were prefabricated pieces, the staircases that revolved in one direction or another to arrive to the platform. And then, yes, you had these moments we don't seldom encounter where you're face to face with an angel and, and you can peek through little holes. Uh. And this is a recent uh, uh, house we just finished. It's uh, completely different than the previous uh, uh, projects because it's a, it's a linear structure instead of a central one. Uh, it's a summer, small summer house in a, in a, a natural setting. Uh, on top of an artificial platform. So the structure of the house is uh, uh, based on 10 rooms uh, in two rows. The rooms are completely the same, one from, from, from the other. And there is a, a, an extension of, of the roof in all four directions beyond the limits of, of the, the rooms. Yeah, that's the floor plan. As Peso was saying, that. There are 10 equivalent rooms. The only relation is that every room is connected to the rooms next door. And the nature of that connection changes completely. So all the social areas are to one side and all the private areas to another. And there's longitudinal connections and, and openings also on the ceilings. Uh, I don't know if you see them, Peso, if you can mark them. There's, uh, depending on the depth of the plan, in, in the longitudinal sense, the openings are in a crossed 
uh, connection. Um, so that creates two different sequences and filad rooms. One is the private rooms where doors are all aligned uh, laterally to the room and then the public spaces are all aligned centrally uh, connecting everything. But also the, in the other direction, these points of light uh, mark the centrality of the room or in relation to the position in the plan. And then all the openings to the outside are equivalent and reinforce uh, the opposite perpendicular relation to, to, the, to the surrounding landscape. So these two rows of rooms uh, are aligned with the, the one with the sunrise, another one with the sun, sunset, so the, the spatial quality of them is, is totally different. Uh, and then, as usual for us, uh, the construction follows the form and it's a simple uh, detail for the walls and, and, and another detail for the roof, that's, that's all. This is another project, it's a, a vertical sequence uh, of, of rooms or of equal rooms, all of them are exactly the same. It's a house that we did uh, for some artist friends who lost their house after the 2010 earthquake in Chile. And so it's, uh, in fact, a reconstruction project. Uh, and the proposal, uh, it, it's, it's based on in this idea of a structure, of, of uh, to do something that is no more than a, than a structure, some, a structure, uh, a steel structure with a regular rhythm that transfer the loads uh, almost without effort to, to, the, to the, the Socalo. So th that's the floor plan. It's six pillars, uh, steel pillars, uh, with a staircase in the center. The structure that um, rigidizes everything is the staircase in the center with those diagonal beams. Uh, so that takes, makes eight equivalent rooms. Uh, two of them are in the, in the concrete podium in the slope. And then six of them are in the glass tower. The staircase is accompanied by furniture on both sides, and there are no doors. It's just eight rooms that are connected. Very small. The floor plan is only four by eight meters. So it's a narrow space that can be then, the privacy of it can then be regulated by a, a certain curtains. Uh, we like it a lot when they're open like this because it, this black bones of the structure are transformed into soft uh, white columns. But yeah, yeah it's, it's almost like a delicate piece of infrastructure in, in the landscape. It had to be built very fast after, after the earthquake. This is another series of paintings we're developing. It's, uh, we're preparing an exhibition called Finite Format, and, and it's a series of each one of the formats is based on 243 variations of uh, an internal structure. In this case, this is an L. And each one of the variations is, uh, well, it's a mathematical calculation, but it's, it's uh, meant to be, uh, to emphasize the singularity of, of, of uh, the, the piece uh, and, and within the same, the same in internal structure. And this is something that we normally try to, to explore in our buildings. Uh, that interaction between something that is invisible, that uh, structures the, the interior, and, and then the expression of that as a, as a, as a figure, as, as, a, as a piece. In this case, for example, the, an old mathematical lesson, which is to, to generate a diagonal tension within a, a, an orthogonal system. This is a house, this is the poly house, and it's located in this peninsula that runs north-south, which is very weird in Chile, since Chile is north-south, and it occupies the most exposed uh, side of the peninsula towards the, the west and the wind, and, and, and it's, it's a very aggressive uh, landscape. And the, the, the site is in, in, in a small peninsula within this uh, peninsula. It's an end point of a, of a journey, of a promenade. And the, 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 the building is surrounded by water in, in three sides. So the, the, the piece is very compact and, and almost uh, yeah, yeah, solitary, isolated in, in, in the location. And it occupies a strategic position that is uh, uh, far enough to the, to the edge so as to be in, in, a, in a safe ground, but close enough so as to be able to look down and see the, the 
the rocks and the sea clashing on, on the rocks. Uh, this, this compact entity, this is the floor plan or, or the scheme. It has a double wall, a double perimeter wall, and then some crossed divisions inside. And uh, this, uh, this creates the, uh, an interstitial space in between those two, those two walls um, that are, in one sense, it's a very massive character uh, around it, and then a very informal uh, uh, space in between. But uh, that massive character that is perceived as a very thick wall is actually uh, containing all the functions. It has a double function of, it works both as a temporary residence and also as a small uh, place for artists in residence who stay, who stay some time there and work. So it had to have two functions. One is more domestic and another one is more neutral. Uh, therefore, in the perimeter, all the fixed functions that are more architectonic, such as staircases and balconies, but also the domestic ones, like bathrooms and kitchens and closets. They're all in the perimeter. And this way, just by uh, hiding them, like in this corner, if you move those shutters, you can take the furniture, integrate uh, those spaces, and change the character of, of, of them, depending on the activities that are going on. And those spaces are also there's always a connection to the outside, transversal connections to, to the existing landscape uh, that, that somehow, um, yeah, there's small like lateral vanishing points uh, that are always occurring within the house. It's also organized in different levels, so those vanishing points are, are diagonal as well, uh, and they, they extend the interior space outwards. But it's always a reconstruction of small fragments. There are always punctual openings. So it's a dynamic reconstruction as you move through the house of those surroundings. As you can see, three of the sides are blue. So those three sides of water. And the side behind is, is the path to arrive to the house. And despite the, this uh, obvious opposition between the geometry of the piece and the, and the natural landscape or the continuity the material continuity between the granite and the concrete, uh, there is a sense of uh, rest and, and, and stability embodied in, in, in the object, uh, since it's uh, very compact and, and transfers the loads directly to the ground without any mediation with the, with the immediate surroundings. So it's very stable. Inside the, the, this monolithic and porous concrete piece, there is a a vertical space, it's a, a void uh, that articulates the interior, the whole experience of the interior with the cliff, with the, the, this sense of vertigo, with the diagonal of, of a hill and capturing and almost act, uh, working as a, as, a, uh, yeah, as a lens to, to see the landscape. All the construction was done there on site by fishermen and farmers, and it's seven layers of concrete that were simultaneously poured. Uh, so it was, we knew that, that the labor was, was extremely yeah, primitive, um, and that, well, this is, you can see, nothing new. This is what Peso was showing at the beginning with a brick oven. Um, so the, the foam work, it was one meter 50, and it was uh, stacked up. It went moving as they poured the concrete. Um, but we knew that all the accidents of, of that type of construction would be visible in the facade, so it's almost like a rough piece of infrastructure in, in the landscape. Uh, and then there are only details that the window is either in the facade or receded into the inner wall, so those are the two distinctions. And inside everything is just uh, white paint, and the foam work was recycled to create these shutters that uh, close and, and separate uh, those, those spaces around them. So as you can see, it's, it's, it's been inhabited by artists who are, are now creating a strong uh, identity for the region with, with their interventions and with their activities. But also it's a moment where the house is not only intensifying art, but it's also intensifying a relation with nature, with all the events that are going on uh, constantly. This is another... Uh cultural landscape, it's, uh, it's a an house, an office building, uh, and we, we like to, to introduce it as a, as a series of coincidences. Uh, for example, not only the, the, the height of, uh, 
of the, the piece is related with existing cypress, but also something more subtle, which is the level of the house, the level of the, the platform, the, 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 the encounter of the tower with this horizon, is exactly at uh, 100 meters on top of sea level. That's the name of the house, it's Cien, which is 100 in, in Spanish. So the building is uh, defined by this double format of uh, podium and tower, uh, with a podium that goes inside the, the earth, it's buried into, into the ground, and the tower that appears uh, more uh, isolated and with a more distant relationship with the landscape. Uh, this, is, as Peso was mentioning before, it's a uh, has three programmatic components. There's an atelier in the, in the bottom part, and then there's three floors of a house, and on top three floors for an office. So it's this combined uh, program that is in the tower, and then the circulations are uh, going from the street level. Sorry, I don't have a pointer, but you can see my finger. From the street level, you go down to the house, and you connect uh, interior through that staircase, or to go up to the office, you go through the platform and then up all the way to the terrace and the three floors on top. So there's a place where both uh, staircases uh, overlap, but there's no connection between them. So staircases, of course, are a shortcut. They are a very, very efficient way of, of going up. There's no railing, it's just stacked pieces uh, of, of cypress, very similar to the ones you saw. This was done before the pavilion in London, but it's the same system of, of stacked wood and the rail becomes a central core where people somehow w polish over time that, that, that space. The, the inner rule of, of the house is the repetition of uh, the same module. Uh, there is a pointer. Yes. Thank you. <laughs> the same module, that is this uh, square figure divided by a, an asymmetrical cross, that is repeated 12 times uh, in, the, in the floor plans of the house. So there uh, six modules that occupy the, the podium and six modules, including the terrace on top, that occupies the, the tower. So the podium is uh, aligned with the, the access level and uh, the, 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 the roof of the podium, but the rooms inside are, are, have a di direct uh, relationship with the garden uh, in, in a lower level. That's the, the same floor plan. You can see there are three modules, uh, a repetition of three modules. And, and if you see the central uh, articulation of modules, it's uh, through this series of uh, six uh, thresholds that are smaller in this part and, and wider here, because this is stepping down towards the, the sunset. So, that generates a distortion of the perspective. It, it, it seems uh, uh, longer than what it actually is uh, in one direction and shorter in, in the other. And then the, the floor plans of the tower, which are very compact, also within that sequence of, of the cross, the relations are completely different. The staircase, for example, is always uh, there. Uh, these are the top three floors of the office. But in this case, the relation is diagonal. And then in the second floor, this is a hole. Uh, so it's the longest path you can do in such a small floor plan. Or in the top floor, there's this crossed cardinal relation through the center of the room that it creates completely different sensations of the same uh, actual area of a floor plan. So all the furniture, this is the floor I was uh, pointing out. So, uh, all the furniture is, is connected to the windows, to the openings around it, and it's all painted as opposed to the photo of, of the house, which is all white. This has a, a gray atmosphere, a very different introspective uh, working place. So it's a, it's a concrete tower with a wooden house inside. Everything is uh, wrapped in wood inside and then just painted, almost like a wallpaper. Uh, covering everything. And it was done in concrete, again in levels of concrete that were piled up. But in this case, we were not interested in, in, the, in the surface. We were interested in the, in the stratums of layers. So there's a slight uh, superficial demolition that gives this soft uh, and angles and, and very soft uh, feeling to the to whole tower. And the, and the presence of the whole piece is uh, somehow problematic because uh, it doesn't have a clear scale. It, it, it might be 
too small for an office building, but too tall for a house, so it, it is somehow uh, uncomfortable. In this uh, last uh, project, this is the house we did in Spain, that Antoine was mentioning. Uh, and for us, it's again similar to the poly house in, in, uh, in terms that uh, it's a, an end point of a, of a journey. Of a, but in this case, it's all the opposite because the arrival occurs from below. The house is located uh, on top of a hill, and so there is a, a parking place there, and then the house on top of the hill. And there is a connection, which is a, a staircase of 100 meters long, a concrete staircase that goes up in, in a straight uh, manner. Uh, so it's, it's very dramatic, and that final effort of going up to, through a staircase is uh, in trying to intensify that arrival moment. So the house it's in, occupied this uh, landscape in the limit of a, the, a national park next to Barcelona. And so the whole ascension occurs under the trees, under the, this uh, uh, native uh, uh, forest. So you go up uh, in the shadows of the trees, almost without any connection with the, with the uh, wide uh, and open landscape. And the house in itself, it's a concentrated piece that is separated from, from the ground. Uh, so as to, to insist in this uh, sense of uh, uh, not only separation or, or, or uh, yeah, yeah, conflict with, uh, with the existing nature, but also with, uh, with this uh, uh, sense of uh, suspension of time. Uh, it, it, this is a house for holidays, so you, you expect to be in a place almost without any reference. Uh, so there is a transition between this linear experience of arrival to a more centralized experience that is floating on top of the trees without any, any hierarchy, any direction. So this, this linear path of arrival from below with a bit of exhaustion then has a moment where, where the staircase divides into two. It's a bicephalous staircase and it's totally arbitrary because both staircases lead to, lead to the same place, uh, which is uh, the base um, of, of the swimming pool. What you see in the center is the volume of water. Uh, so you can take two paths all around it. It's one path on one side or the other lead to the same staircases. But there's two little diagonal windows that connect you back to the sky upwards. Uh, so once you enter, you can take, again, either direction leads to the same place. But you already have an anticipation of this tunnel-like structure and the blue light. Uh, and somehow you can maybe, in a voyeuristic way, see someone else who's occupying the house at that moment and who's swimming in the swimming pool and, and who's maybe welcoming you as you, as you ascend. And the format of, of, uh, of the whole structure is this blind podium and the transparent uh, platform uh, suspended on top. Uh, and that platform contains a, a, a central room that has, which is a patio, an open room, uh, that has the same size of, of the podium. So in fact, all the perimeter, all the interior space, it's a, uh, if you make a section of, of that space, it's surrounded by air all around, on top and, and, and laterally. The, that's the upper floor plan of, of, a, of a platform. So there is the central room that contains the swimming pool in the, in the very center, uh, which in fact is, is the only contained room of, of the house that is open to the sky. And then a perimeter with uh, uh, four independent pavilions, uh, and then a, a rhythm of 16 columns all around. So in every side, you have a central uh, glass pavilion, and then the corners are open. And, sorry, and one other thing is that in this lower part, if you saw in the, in the painting, that's where all the machines are. It's a completely off-grid house. It's all self-sufficient. So there's, uh, all the technical aspects are in this lower part. But, but in this elevated rotonda, um, people can, can move around as they want. There's these four glass pavilions and four terraces in the corners. But depending on if you're looking for the sun or escaping it, uh, activities can shift around the house. So this is the central room that is uh, open to the sky, but contains uh, a volume of water. And it's only punctuated uh, 
uh, in the perimeter and in all four directions. Uh, so it has a very selective relationship with the, with the landscape in opposition to the perimeter that is totally open. And then you can move uh, around according to, yeah, sun or shadow, depending on, on the time of the year. So this, it's, it's based on all these contradictions between being inside or being outside or, or uh, seeing the landscape or seeing the sky, what is the landscape, and somehow this linear uh, relation that, that is about arriving to it then turns into a three-dimensional, all, all simultaneous around, around the house. The, all the fixed functions are in the, in the wall that uh, links to the courtyard. Uh, and it's a very narrow space, almost like a gallery space that, that uh, connects you to, to the outside. There you can see the continuity, the material continuity between the pavilion and the corner, and then the, the, the swimming pool and the, and, and the whole vase of the pool plus the, the walls uh, covered with the same texture. Uh, but the central room uh, has openings that can, uh, glass panels that can slide towards the, the corner. So in fact, you can turn the interior into a, a, a balcony and then close the, the corners. So this narrow interior that allows you to have a, for example, from this point, to have a, a very uh, uh, steep diagonal to, to the sky, uh, can be transformed into a, a, a rather a, a balcony with the corners uh, closed. So it, it's an inversion of, 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 of the spatial condition. Um, all the house is made in concrete, it was done in situ, and so that you can have this cantilever, actually uh, it's big virendel beams that uh, carry the loads through the courtyard uh, to the ground. Uh, and in the perimeter it's again these virendel beams that are hanging here. So what you see as, as what looks like a, like a very massive column is not actually so. It has a metal piece inside and it's a tensor that is pulling the loads upwards. Uh, to a beam that is receded on the on the on the um, on the roof on the higher part, so this idea of suspension that Peso was mentioning, suspension of time, suspension, physical suspension as well. The house is floating in the landscape with with uh, all this uh, wonderful view around it, 360 degrees. This is part again part of uh, the same series of paintings, and and for us it's a. Uh, uh, sort of uh, synthesis of what we have been doing. It's a, a very simple structure, a very con self-contained uh, uh, formal entity, and like an inner world. And, and we think that all the projects we are developing are, are uh, no more than, than the same project, one uh, over and over, the same thing over and over. And, and for us, it's, 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 that's part of what we could contribute to the, the notion of intimacy, because it's, it's what we believe, it's, it's our natural way of, of understanding reality, which is uh, a way of trying to do always the same thing, but never in the same way. Thank you. Thank you.